Hey guys, welcome to the Field of 68 YouTube channel. If you like what you see here, hit that subscribe button and you'll get more college basketball content just like this. End of this Creighton Oregon game. Been a thrilling double overtime uh, win for Creighton. We ended up on a day, John Henson, where we don't have a single upset. We didn't have a single lower seed find a way to win a game in the NCAA tournament today. Creighton, right now, 82, Oregon, 71. Uh, T.O., how yeah. about your initial reactions, your initial thoughts? One of the best games that we've seen this entire tournament. Yeah, it certainly is. And, and secondly, uh, I'm following every bet that John Henson has from here on out. <laughs> My man is loading up. <laughs> now, uh, so, uh, what an incredible defensive game. I know that it ends up being 83-71. It looks like they scored a lot of points. This was a high-level de defensive effort by both teams and then some really high-level shot making. This was the game of the tournament so far. In both overtime games happening in Pittsburgh, and my only question about this whole thing is, who the hell picks the late game on the East Coast and the earliest game of the day in Salt Lake City? I can't figure out why that is, but I, I, it's for people smarter than me, I guess. But what a performance all the way around. Cousinard, Dante were excellent for Oregon. They didn't have enough around them. Uh, but what an effort by Creighton, especially at the end of the game, to really battle back as a bank three goes in yeah um they wore Oregon down I mean it took double overtime but Oregon's kind of slow style of play only giving yourself one option offensively it caught up to him and and even with Creighton coming down the stretch they didn't know what to do offensively they didn't have anybody to attack the drop coverage Oregon was kind of sticking with him but you let a good team keep playing keep staying in the game this is what you get. Craig's going to advance, and who knows how far, but Oregon had them on the ropes. Kalkbrenner three. Yeah. Ashworth three. Shireman, terrific pass at the end of the shot clock. They made plays, more plays when they needed to down the stretch. They're the better team, and now we get a great matchup. Creighton, Tennessee. I mean, who doesn't want to see that one? Yeah. That's, no, that's gonna be fun. I, I'm excited about that. I, kind of, I was ready for Oregon. I thought Oregon's gonna win this game, so I could, so I could go ahead and fade Oregon because Tennessee was gonna take care of them. But it'll yeah. be more, a little bit more fun. Yeah. I, look, I, at the end of the day, I think this was two things to me. One, we saw the elite ability that Creighton has with their their four best players. Right. We know how good those four guys are: Ashworth, Kyle Brenner, Shireman, and Trey Alexander. Right. We know what those four guys can do. Uh, but I was really impressed with some of the changes that Greg McDermott made. Like we think about him as this guy that comes up with all of these different uh, sets and all of these different plays that they run, and he schemes these shots for all these different guys, and, and he's very good at that. I've never seen Ryan Kalkbrenner trap a screen before. This is his fourth year in college, yeah. three-time defensive player of the year in the Big East. Never seen him trap a ball screen before. They did it three times in a row at the end of the first overtime to be able to get that thing to a second overtime. That changed the game. Because all Oregon was doing was giving the ball to Jermaine Kuznar, who was unbelievable, by the way, and just saying, go beat this drop coverage, and he was doing it. It took him a little longer than it probably should have to figure that out, but he made the tweak at the end of the day. The, the most points ever scored by a player in the first two games. There was a graphic that CBS put up uh, earlier in the game, I, and that was before he hit his last three and a couple other buckets. Like uh, He was outstanding. I think he made some money uh, yeah. this tournament. I, I really do. I mean, big, strong, physical, can attack the paint like – he did a lot of good things this week. I, I'll be honest, guys. You know, I had to I had to scout against him when he was in South Carolina. Like, I I would not have. Well, he wasn't that. This. He, he wasn't. wasn't that. They, now they didn't he play was a like junkyard this either. Dog kind of guy, right? And they've turned him to an on-ball, yep. dynamic score. Size. Yeah. Nice touch. Can shoot it. He's a pro. I, I was surprised that he's not. He's made some money for sure this weekend. Yep. Listen, if. Uh, Oregon won that. I was going to say the Pac-12 is the greatest conference ever going out. <laughs> I mean, think about it. It's amazing now, what they've done with football and this one, the way the way everything there you go. You there know, you play go. itself out. Yep. Sad to see it go. Yep. Um, thoughts on Creighton real quick? Creighton Man. against Tennessee. Early predictions? I, I, I have Tennessee like – I have Tennessee going far. I have them in the championship and a couple of my like brackets in my pool. So, mm -hmm. I'm going with Tennessee. Uh, it will be interesting to see – what they do, Creighton does defensively, because Caught Brenner was so was such a big piece. We're not really talking about in this game, the shot blocking, the, the rim protection, the verticality. Um, him and Adu, it's going to be interesting to see how how that matchup you know shakes out. But I can't wait for the perimeter matchup. That's going to be fun. Who are you putting on Dalton Connects? 
Is it Trey? I think uh, he's a failure. I think it has to be Trey. It has to be. Trey's too small. But who else are you going to have? Who else? And last time, Shireman needs to be hidden defensively. I think I'm saying, you don't have so another option. Yeah, you don't have, you don't option. Don't have one. You're right. They but connect get, didn't play well. Underneath him. Shireman's not taking the challenge. Trey can get up underneath, connect. Right. You remember, no, Trey's the only option. Yeah. Right. He's the He's only the option. option. But to me, again, Tennessee, and we'll get to it, they didn't shoot it well tonight. Mm -hmm. That bodes well. They won an ugly one tonight. Mm -hmm. They're not going to play like this again offensively. Connect's not going to have two. He hasn't. All year, he hasn't had two back-to-back -back games right. where he's been off. So he's going to come to play. I think it's going to be a good game up and down. It, it might be the best game of the Sweet 16. Good yeah. for basketball, too. But it's good for college right. basketball. The one thing about all of these uh, higher seeds winning is we are going to get some absolute yeah. barn burners in the Sweet 16. It's going to be a lot of fun. Tomorrow, I do not expect to see all of the higher seeds win. I think we're going to get a little bit more craziness tomorrow, but we got some really good games today. Thank you for watching the Field of 68. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, hit that like button, share this link with your friends, or check out the description for some other places that you can consume Field of 68 content.